Hello all, and here with our summary for our Vampire Rebirth game. So a lot happened, I'm going to try and keep everything, and I have a lot of notes, so let's dive into this. First of all, we opened up with Arthur, Victoria, and Ivy, sneaking into Michelle Collins' place. Uh, we picked up where we left last time with them going to the basement, finding the seven-pointed star, the black candles, the blood, and the mirrors. After smashing the mirrors, they went upstairs. Uh, searching this person's place, they left very sparse, but they were able to find underneath their bed a baseball bat, and within their dresser, an old tome written in what they suspected to be Latin after looking around. Outside, they ended up coming across a someone watching the house, which they chased down. It turned to be some kind of drug dealer who mentioned uh, that they had were a dealer to Marshall Collins and someone named the Jackal, which raised some questions. With that, the group ended up dissolving these three, uh, Arthur returning to his domain and Victoria returning to the Elysium, hoping to meet up with Estelle. Meanwhile, leading to Estelle, she had finished up her meeting with Margaret before heading back towards Arthur's domain area in hopes of finding him. Um, after calling Joey a couple times and not getting an answer, uh, she waited patiently before getting a message from Estelle to meet her at the Elysium to the occult stuff. En route, she ran to Arthur and they conversed. Estelle eventually met up with Victoria and recognizing that there was some occult symbology in here, she decided to look into her contacts at who knew Latin, which led her to Thomas, an older venture, setting up a meeting with him and Victoria. Her and the same meeting with him, Estelle and Victoria made their way to a closed down bar that he was in, while well, closed for the night. His ghouls were running it and he was calmly relaxing there. Estelle made a minor boon for him to do some translating work for her and left. Before Victoria could go, in the awkwardness, uh, he offered her a drink, in which she obliged, and then he offered, made a bigger offer. He wanted her to, with her reputation for birds, he wanted to know if they could spy on someone for him on Saturday. Uh, Victoria informed they could, and he offered a minor boon if they could bring any useful information back, and that he would send over the address later. And with that, Victoria returned to her domain. Meanwhile, Joey and Louisa were in fisticuffs with some police officers after dispatching them brutally in a hospital parking garage. They stuffed the bodies into a broken down van that the cops had seen them smashing up earlier. This is concerning as they left and weren't able to find any cameras. With that, they called around trying to figure out what to do next, and at Marco's suggestion, after Joey had offered up his haven for the guests, they needed blood dolls and a tour guide ghoul. This led to a discussion about a limo driver, so they called up an UberX, uh, getting the only limo out there that night, and eventually picking up Jack and Arthur. Jack, however, during this time, had gone to the police station to cause some antagonism. But, seeing a bunch of them leave for unknown reasons, you know, a hospital fight, uh, he snuck in with his obfuscate. There, he was caught by a Balkavian known as Hank, going through some files. Hank interrogated him on why he was there, and they came to an agreement. Jack was able to find the information of the other hospital that Joey was kidnapped to that night, and Hank got a boon and a chance to punch a caitiff, which made Hank feel good. With that, Jack had returned to his domain near Arthur's. Arthur had come in contact with him as they discussed about finding the jackal. Uh, Jack called around and found out that he could meet up with the jackal, just not tonight. And with that, they've seen the limo coming through their abandoned industrial area. There, they got picked up by Joey and Louisa. And before they could get much further, Estelle as well, leading them all to an abandoned area where Louisa and Joey brutally forced Vitae into this driver's mouth before telling them it was all a comedy show and using some convention, a little bit of powers with our good friend, good friend Venture in the back seat. 
uh, the driver believed it was sent on his way. Most of the others ended up losing some time and having to head back to a haven, but Victoria, returning to her domain, found Ivy there. Trying not to lose her temper, Ivy informed her that, you know, she was just speaking to the mice, hoping to get some more information. This did lead them to find out information that there was another person that smelled like the monster. And after some run around, the mouse led Victoria into an apartment building. There she confronted some thug, got her way into the apartment, knocked him out, bound him, put him in the closet, and did a pickup, which was the delivery of a silver necklace. Leaving more clues than answers, Victoria returned to her own domain to rest during the day. The next night, the coder was informed. Essentially, the prince was calling a meeting. There were a number of breaches of the masquerade in the last two nights, and he wants answers and heads on platters for what happened. All kindred in the city are to meet at midnight, or be direly punished. And with that, that's a summary of our last game. Hope everyone's having a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.